Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will explain what the statistic mode function is and all its rules, and we will write a Python function to perform this statistical function. Let's do this. The mode function looks for the value that appears most often. Here you can see in this set of numbers, one appears most often. Sometimes, however, two numbers share that position, as we can see here, one and five. In this set of numbers, you can see that 1, 5, and 10 all share the top position with two elements each. Notice here, all the numbers are unique, hence, all the frequencies are 1. We do not have a mode value here. As you can see here, we have two groups of number 1 and 5. Both have 5 occurrences. This fails the mode test. Before we dive into the code of the find mode function, let's just see how this runs. Notice I have 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. Do we have a mode there? Yes. 2 is our mode. Let's run this. Notice the number 2 appeared three times. Now what if I come up there and give another 1? Well, this will be our first fail because we have two numbers and each of them have three. There is no mode. And what if we give another number, uh, three? Now we have a unique set here. We have two as the leader and then a straggler. So here, one is three, two is three. But notice three, he's the one that made one and two successful. So this is what our function will perform. We'll write this code step by step and you'll understand it as well as anybody. Before we dive into all the source code, let's kind of like understand a big picture. Here, I'm gonna test to see if this is the starting location with double underscore name. Does that equal double underscore main? And if it does, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna set this up as my data. I'm gonna call that D. And then we're gonna write a function called find mode, and I'm gonna pass D in. And the return value of that is mode. Mode is actually an object. It is a list of objects. And notice here, you can see that I loop over mode and I print out the number and the number of times it appeared. If you remember our demo that we just saw, sometimes you saw the number one appeared three times. Well, this is where that's being printed. If there is no mode for that set, then we get this message and I show you the numbers. So pretty much we're gonna go write this fine mode. Before we get into fine mode, let us create a class object. And here we have a constructor. Self is about you know how we can access this object and number and appears are the two parameters that we're going to use to keep track of what numbers we're seeing and how many times they appear. So that's what this object is for here. We're going to make a list of this object. Now we can start looking at find mode. Notice my input is D. D is the data here on line 21. It's a list of numbers. I'm going to come in here on line 11 and create a mode list that is a empty set of numbers. And actually this right here is going to be a empty list of type elements. And then I create an item called max entry and I say elements, its number is zero and its count is zero. This is just initializing the max entry. The entry zero means it had never appeared. So it doesn't matter what this value is. Notice I initialized index to zero. Size is the length of my list. I say is index less than that size? Yes. So let's go start cherry picking the values out of this array, this list, if you will. So for L in node list. Well, initially it is null, right? There are no values in there. On line 11, we say, hey, you're empty set. So it's just going to come down here. Notice we 
then the Sentinel assignment to found say false. If found is false, let's create a new element with that entry and let's put its count as one. Then increment index and come back up here again. Do the test, is index less than size? Get the next number. Notice we have one again, right? So I come down there, now mode list is not null. So now I'm gonna check that out. Is that number the same number? Yes, it is. So I increment my count. And then what I do is I compare that appear count with what I set here was my max entry. And notice now one has been set to two. So I come in here and make one, two as my max entry. And then notice I hit found is true because all I did was increment the appear count. I don't do this no more and I come get the next entry. I stay inside of this loop until I've been through this whole list. Now on line 31, notice mode list, I'm appending new items. On line 36, I'm gonna go get a length of them, a count, how many unique numbers do we have? Then I'm gonna initialize this variable called mode is available is false. I have to prove it to be true, and we're about to do this in the next for statement. And remember how we set max entry. And I just stay inside of this loop until I either set mode is available to true, or I just keep adding these. But this right here is the key variable for me to send that back to the user. So now you understand what mode is available means. What happens here is when we set max value, I know the number that I'm looking for. Only put items into the list that have that same appear count. So we're building a new list called M underscore list. Notice I initially set it to empty. Just remember, there's a lot of rules about what makes a mode successful. Just because I have a bunch of numbers in a list does not mean I have a mode. Remember all my first screens about how many ways we can fail. Notice if mode is available set to true, I return that list I'm building, else I return none. Notice when I get the return value mode, I say, hey mode, are you not equal none? If you're not equal none, that means I have a list of numbers to show you, one or many. If this right here is none, then there are none, and I'm gonna show you this set. So there you have it, team. Here is the function, find mode.